Once you've created your site, you're greeted with the Google Site Building Platform, which looks like this. If you started from a template, you'll actually see some pre-populated text boxes and things like that. Uh, if you started from a blank page like me, you'll be looking at a page title and enter site name and all these other things, along with a couple different uh, tools on the right-hand side here. We're going to get through all of this over the next couple of videos, but in this video, I'm just going to go over the basics of using the Google Site Designer. The first thing you want to do is you want to name your site. So if I type up here where it says Untitled Site, I'm going to call this Google Sites Virtual Workshop. You can obviously call the site whatever it is that you want, and that's going to go ahead and name the document. So if you created the site in, say, your Google Drive folder, once you refresh your page, you should see the Google Site listed there with your name. If you create it on the Google Site platform, you will again see the Google Site listed there along with all of your other sites if you have any with the new name and like any other doc, it shows you the last time it was edited and opened and all that. The next thing is that you actually are looking at your home page. So a site is assembled from however many pages you want and you can also do sub pages. So for example, if I made a page called classes, I can then make a page under that called STEM 7, STEM 8, all my other different classes, or I can just have general pages. That can be viewed on the Pages tab here, and you can see that we're on Home. At a minimum, you always need to have at least one page for your site to be able to be published. Now, you can change the title. So, for example, I can call this Home Page, and this is all happening up on the header. Now, in addition to the Pages tab of our toolbar, we have an Insert tab, which we'll get into in a later video. This is how you drop in text boxes and things like that. And you have the Themes tab. Now the Themes tab can go ahead and change the overall color and fonts. And Google pretty much automatically chooses fonts and colors and different key tones that look good on the website so that way you'll never have things that are difficult to read or uh, formatting that doesn't quite work with all the content. So right now we're in the simple theme and I can change my general colors by clicking all these different options and I can change my general font style. I can also mix my own custom colors so if I want to mix my own custom maroon or whatever it is, I can do that. I can also change my general theme just by scrolling through and this will change my header image and it will change my overall fonts. I personally like this impression one and I can again change my general colors like so. Now you can also change your header type. So for example, you can have a small banner, you can have a large banner, you could have a cover image that takes up a lot of space, you can have just the title. You can also upload your own custom image. So if I upload an image, say one that I've already created, it'll drop it in and automatically do what Google calls adjust for readability. So what it's done is it's actually faded the image that I designed, the header image by Google Sites with Mr. Erdreich image here. So that way the font is easier to read over it. Now I can turn off readability like so just by clicking this little checkbox here and that'll actually make my image a little bit more bold. And what I actually want to do is I want to first adjust my blue to say match the blue in my header image a little bit better. And then I actually want to delete the title. So that way it's just my Google Sites with Mr. Erdreich workshop banner. And whatever template and header you choose automatically populates for a later page. So if I just create another page real quick by going to the Pages tab, and if I just call this, uh, I don't know, sample, just to show you guys what I'm talking about here, it automatically takes the header image and the fonts to my next page. And I can't change it. So for example, I can't have my sample page have a different font or different colors. Uh, I have to stick with the same font, but I can change my header image, and I'll get all the, into this in a later video when we talk about adding and editing additional pages. The next thing that you'll see up in your toolbar is you have an undo and redo, as well as a preview window. So as you're working on your site, you should always go back and forth between the preview window to see what it actually looks like on, say, uh, uh, not, your, not your computer. So if you want to see what it looks like from a student's perspective on even a phone or a tablet or a Chromebook, you can hit this preview button and it'll open up your site in full page. So you'll notice that sometimes formatting changes a little bit when you do this. You can also see what it looks like on a phone. So you can see that my header image is actually cut off on a phone unless, of course, I rotate the phone sideways and then it's still even a little bit cut off. So you can always use this preview window to see what your site actually looks like because it looks a little bit different in the design window here. 
In the next video, we're going to talk about actually publishing your site, getting it on the website, or getting on the. In the next video, we're going to talk about actually publishing your website, getting it out on the World Wide Web, and choosing who can see it, whether it's public or maybe only your students or only a specific Google class. And then we'll get into actually populating and adding things to our sites from there.